but the the article was addressing Carl Barth, the, uh, the Swiss theologian Carl Barth, and the apparent revelation um, through letters and, and missives and things that his assistant he had a he had let's 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 say he had an, an inappropriate um affection for his assistants now i i haven't read through it so i can't tell you for sure that i was saying oh yeah he was he was committing adultery with this person in terms of the physical act i think we could argue that um an affection for his female assistant beyond um friendship or even a familial um love for her that veered into romantic is adultery i mean we know that we, we know that uh, if you look upon a woman lustfully, you've committed adultery with her in your heart. So certainly this would qualify. Um, but the, the article is basically po basically positing this idea that, um, that the personal holiness of a theologian or a pastor or whoever uh, is, is um, connected in, an, in a, uh, a, f a very fundamental way with what they teach, with their doctrine, with their theology. And while I would argue, yes, personal holiness is is important. It's essential. It is part of sanctification. It's something that we are to, um, to hold ourselves accountable to for sure. Uh, the question becomes, okay, does, does that necessarily affect the doctrine being taught by the person um, that has basically engaged in, in you know, or even in this case, you might argue with with Karl Barth that that he had uh, doctrinal deficiencies in this area. He didn't understand it fully, or was unwilling to for some reason. And the article is, and with no discussion of the actual doctrine that they might want to talk about that Barth taught, which I think was purposeful, basically just throws this out there, throws this out in the open that hey, you know, well, we found out that Karl Barth was an adulterer, and was also making theological excuses for his adultery, which is not horribly uncommon, um, unfortunately. And because he's such a respected theologian doing this kind of a thing, uh, we shouldn't respect him so much. And they sort of just leave it out there. Now, Karl Barth is a, was a committed Calvinist, um, and I think that's why the Gospel Coalition would like to take issue with it. Um, but they would like you to to read in between the lines and say, oh, yeah, hey, Barth, the committed Calvinist, had an adultery problem, and a theological problem that stemmed from it. Therefore, um, you should probably throw out everything that he taught, and perhaps the the doctrine he actually taught is um, is is slimed or is tainted in some way because of his other beliefs or actions in, in this area. They want you to draw that conclusion. They didn't draw the conclusion in the article. It was the, the article was something like Karl Barth and and it said it had Karl Barth and adultery in the title. <laughs> I know I remember that. But the, the, um, the thesis of the article or the summation of the article was, was basically that theologians or pastors that lack personal holiness, um, uh, that it compromises what they teach. And I would argue it can compromise what they teach, but we would also have to open the door, logically speaking, um, if you have a theologian or pastor who is committing adultery and another one who isn't, and they teach the same thing, they're teaching the same thing, well, then, then we would have to argue that the one pastor's personal holiness is not affecting the validity of that teaching. Because if you remove him from the conversation entirely, the teaching is still there. You put him back in the conversation, he's still teaching the same thing. So this, this is, again, I mean, and, and it just it's, it's happens so often over there at, with these Gospel Coalition Tim Keller types, they don't they don't actually apply any sort of and it, it's ironic because the article had, cites R. C. Sproul, who would be very much opposed to this line of thinking. R. C. Sproul being a classical apologist, R. C. Sproul being someone that that would say our logical faculties are essential to understanding truth. And in fact, are the primary driver of how we interpret it from a personal level. Um, he would be um, manifestly opposed to this generalization of Barth's theology is wrong because he was an adulterer. Barth's theology was wrong because he had an inappropriate relationship with his assistant um, that also he, he seems to try to make theological excuses for. Therefore, what he taught is compromised. 
except that the same things that he taught are also taught by others that presumably don't have that baggage, didn't commit adultery, didn't have an inappropriate relationship with their assistant, uh, didn't, didn't um, try to excuse it theologically, uh, which, which, by the way, most Christians, a lot of, I mean, and this happens, committed Christians who are serious about doctrine fall into sinful patterns and they do what their human nature would would pull them to do and they start searching scripture for an excuse they start searching scripture for a justification uh for what they're doing because in their they're still bearing the flesh nature they can't get around the the tug of war at least for 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 a period um it's it's been reported apparently that carl barth's wife and this woman um and and him uh they caused all sorts of strain which of course you would imagine, but I guess she was still kind of part of the family in some way. I don't know again, what the physical nature of the relationship was or wasn't, or even if it existed or if it was just an inappropriate affection for her. Um, in any case, it was sin and certainly trying to theologically justify it is also sinful and, and not a thing, but that doesn't mean that the rest of what he taught is invalid. It can't logically mean that because again, other people would teach the same thing that don't have that kind of holiness baggage, if you want to call it that. And yet, the Gospel Coalition puts this article out there with no details about the theology itself and just expects you to basically draw your own conclusion. They're, they're, they're painting part of the picture, the part of the picture that they think will leave you open to coming to their desired conclusion, which is Calvinism is bad, ironically. Ironically, because Tim Keller supposedly is a, is a Reformed guy. 